everyone, welcome to a little bit of a different video. Does anyone remember Silverware Studios and Roblox? If you don't, what the heck are you doing? Silverware Studios is arguably the best group of hobby creators on Roblox, with classics like Stop Booby Pants, SpongeBob DX, Despicable Forces, and many more. Unfortunately, all those classics were taken down because of possible copyright issues. The only one that stayed was Despicable Forces, which now belongs to the Despicable Boost group. But the good news is that all the old games will eventually get remastered, with the Shrunken School lobby out right now holding the spot of the Booby Pants lobby. I mean, I don't think the Spongebob one is coming back, I think we all know why. Now for the main reason I'm making this video. If you saw the intro, which you probably did, there was a secret button on the second floor of the first outside area of the game, with all the pencil bridges. If you push it, it will unlock a hidden room on the right of the pencil bridges nearest to the gym entrance. If you choose to go through the unlocked door, you get both nostalgia and permanent BTSD. Here you can find a bunch of writings and references on the floor, walls, and even the ceiling. And this terrifying doll of Weird Al that I like to call Weird Dal. Thank you, thank you, I know, brilliant name. If you can't see much and you want to know if there's some more lore, don't worry, because there's a flashlight that you can get for- Oh, frick, I don't have any rope. I said you thought that was rope? No way, I'm gonna milk this entire room if it's lore. Most of this will be easter eggs, but let's just go with that. One easy easter egg is the what does the P stand for on the chalkboard. This is an obvious reference to the villain Professor Poopy Pants from the Captain Underpants franchise. Now to the not so obvious references. We used to have a janitor. That is actually true, but before I dig deeper into that I need to check my inventory to see if the original badges are still available to check. All the original badges are static, but I think we have only truly seen the janitor once in a ditch full to get rich obby. Mopping the floor is in the Star Wars mini obby, what the- And before I forget, he also made an appearance in the Staff Movie Pants obby. Okay, this next writing is very lore heavy, so watch out. Also spoilers. The power of music, stop the beast. If you somehow don't know, let's let Agnes from Despicable Forces explain. Thank you, that didn't help at all. But yeah, the power music is basically a rock guitar that can be used as a weapon of power. According to Despicable Forces, the power of music lies in the Temple of Music located in Quesadilla Caverns. I can't believe I have the will to actually know this stuff. After trying to defeat Mel in the temple, we realized that the power of music was fake and Mel set us up. But now that I'm thinking about it, it's got me wondering, where did the real power music go? And if that was the real guitar, where did Mel take it? Some other endings near the wall say Temple of Music and Ice Crab. The Ice Crab is a reference to the frozen Mr. Krabs in the Spongebob movie, which sparked the entire concept of the power of music. And this last one really got me puzzled. We're Weird Alien. Could this mean that Weird Al in the Shovelware universe is an alien? I might be talking trash, but this might be true. How long do you think the Temple of Music has been standing, including the fact the giant Weird Al statue near the power's resting spot? And another thing to note, in various games of the Shovelware universe, Weird Al has been called the leader of the resistance. Maybe he created the power of music and found us at a darkest moment in the Poopy Pants hobby. I think the only real reason that he was in the game is because of the Weird Al references in the original franchise, including getting to sing Captain the Pants' theme song in the movie. No, I will not be playing that right now. Maybe since we are the main character in the game, maybe we were chosen to keep the power of the guitar with us in all situations, no matter how ridiculous the problem is. Giant robot toilet, talking rival car, 80s style villain, a giant toilet again, and blasting the toilet screen into the dust. Okay, maybe the last one was a bit overdramatic, but yeah, helping us out at our darkest moment no matter the size. Now with the original game white, the power music lies in the abandoned classroom, untouched. Okay, this is where things get juicy in lore. Sorry, that, that sounded weird, then. It's always been him, every obstacle, everyone must know. If you still don't know, Shovelware's mascot is a banana from the peanut butter and jelly time meme. Making various cameos in the alleys and having a major role in their only tycoon, if, we, if you can even call it major. But more on that later. What matters is that whoever is writing on the walls is aware that the banana was the one get in our way and placing every obstacle. Or for more story driven nonsense, they could even be aware that they are just fictional characters of the game they have to play along with.
I am saying this as an average person, I don't know. Now that's all you can really see with, with the darkness room. But if you have Robux and decide to buy the flashlight, you get- Whoa, holy frick! Santa Claus is a lie, you better watch out. This will have some extra quotes near like Mecha Robot WMD, which stands for Weapon of Mass Destruction. Always watching and Robot Overlord. Now remember how the tycoon I mentioned earlier? Well, there is more than just Shovelware Studios. The main group makes the obvious you all know and love. Shovelware North makes tycoons, and this group literally only made one tycoon, Warren Grinchmas. There are more booths, but those are relevant to the story right now. In Warren Grinchmas, you have to make your Christmas space while donating money to build a giant mecha claws in order to stop the Grinch from stealing Christmas. And apparently, the events of the Mecha Claws launching to take out the Grinch took place after the Christmas story. So yeah, it's pretty unsatisfying that way. But beside that, there is a totally secret tunnel somewhere in the map, leading you to a realization that the money wasn't even needed for the robot, and Shovelware was keeping the money for themselves. Storing it in their vault, which looks suspiciously like the vault in the Shovelware office and escaped the banana zombie. Or maybe it's just branding and kind of style, which is pretty much more believable. Did I say that correctly? No one will ever know! No one will ever know. One classic quote from the franchise that actually originated from a TV show that I don't even know the name of. That quote is also seen behind the red writing of Everyone Must Know. That might imply that they knew about the bananas quote and wrote on the wall for whatever reason. Now we are reaching a point where we will begin to wrap things up. I like to call the danger zone. I have no idea why, it's still a work in progress. Again, if you don't know the show where story, but we're going as a chunk in school now, so there's that. Agents cease and desist work for the DMCA, which stands for the Department of Mitigating Criminal Activity. Whoa, I finally caught it this time! In the quiz part, it's revealed that the department takes down evil yet very unoriginal criminals. Now, that may not make sense at first, but if you keep playing and eventually get close to the end, you'll find this invention called the DMCA Takeover, a giant ray gun that wipes out all traces of an event ever happening. All it needs to operate is an object that started the situation, a target involved in the situation to aim at, and apparently an electricity outlet. Wow, great move there, guys. If you think about it and tie it all up, it can actually make sense that you were the one writing on the walls, not you specifically, the humanoid. The one the player plays as in all the adventures, using the power of music and stuff. The DMCA is in charge of taking care of unoriginal criminals, but they never said anything to us about anything unoriginal. Season this is might also know that they are just in a game too, and want to destroy all signs of copyright and unoriginality so they don't get to leave either creator or shovelware. As your humanoid was wandering around the nose, cease and desist talk about erasing everything, the humanoid goes into a panic and tries to find a way to stop it. Knowing that they won't have any control over the situation without the power of music or anybody on their side, they come up with only one solution. Make a special time capsule. They search for the school that started it all and make the writings on the walls and classroom out of the boundaries, including sewing up a weird owl doll. Before the humanoid could escape, he gets spotted by Cease and Desist and gets taken to the DMCA headquarters. Cease and Desist, knowing that the humanoid could be involved with every single adventure, they take out their DMCA takedown, reveal that they had found the power of music first. They somehow shove the guitar inside and fire the ray at the humanoid, erasing everything and every game, waiting for their creator to bring them back before she wiped the copyright. The humanoid, now with lost memory of all past shovelware content, decides to join the DMCA after only remembering well their parkour skills as special agents. The DMCA, knowing that the power of music was going to be too strong for the world to handle, they hide it inside the abandoned classroom where the humanoid wrote everything, knowing that nobody else would try to go there. Just in case Song was going to try to go over there, they hit a special button that, that was the only thing able to unlock the door. Humanoid's past self hopes that their present self can remember everything and bring it all back. But hey, that's just a theory. Uh, yeah, oh no, that was stupid. I'm never doing that again. Now I know that there are also other writings on the walls, but they are mostly just nonsense and references. If you have any guesses about the show or lore, let me know. But here are some to keep in mind. Hiding in the broom closet, memory, paint store, half a mile, dump truck. That second one is completely random. I guess I might see you in the next vision to this showware series. 
Thank you for watching till the end. It is very appreciated. Don't forget to like, subscribe, do all that stuff. And we will see you next time if my upload schedule is trash again. Bye!